Now, I just referred to your role as a leader. You don't have to have direct reports or support a senior level executive to be a leader. In Drew Dudley's TEDx talk, Everyday Leadership, he calls on society to celebrate leadership as the everyday act of improving each other's lives. And isn't that our goal every day? To improve our executives' lives as well as our colleagues? So yes, we are all leaders in some form or fashion. Let's explore some leadership skills that can always be improved on. I started this session saying communication is one of the biggest reasons partnerships fail. It shouldn't be surprising that communication is the first leadership skill to improve. Be mindful that everyone has a different style, that circumstances may dictate reactions, either yours or theirs, and that your own emotions can misrepresent or betray you if you are not consciously directing all types of communication. As a leader, you must fight not to gossip, be judgmental, show negativity, or have too many excuses. Communication starts with honesty. Be authentic, be, your, be yourself, show integrity, become your word and be empathetic with whom you are communicating. It's interesting to note that verbal communication is present in both spoken and written words. Both forms require the use of professional and tactful choices of words, but the spoken word has emphasis on tone, emotion, and quick thinking. Remember, words can be compared to a tube of toothpaste. Once you squeeze the paste out, you can't put it back. Nonverbal communication takes the form of smiling, gesturing, pausing, and so on. Many people are not aware of how often they communicate nonverbally, and therefore they do not take the opportunity to curate their silent words. Administrators, administrative leaders have access to a view of the office as well as the organization that no one else has. Step back and take a 10,000 foot view of the personalities and relationships in your team and determine how they perform and interact. This is a valuable tool you may not even realize that you have at your very fingertips. By taking that step back, you may find one or more of your team or coworkers portray an attitude of being unproductive or unmotivated. The next leadership skill to develop is motivating others. I find it baffling that some assistants do not take advantage of what is offered free to them, such as participating in administrative offsites, information meetings, or training. You've probably experienced this within your own company. These individuals might already be considered high performing, but possibly could be even more so if they took advantage of these opportunities. Take the time to have a personal connection with them. What successful projects or processes have they worked on or been involved in? Use that information to praise them or recognize their contributions. Praise is an incredible uh, attitude and morale booster. Words of appreciation can go a long way in motivating a teammate, especially if their executive is not one to show appreciation. Expressing appreciation and encouragement is a great way to solve their lack of motivation. If it is an assistant that is new to the company or to the administrative profession, offer to serve as a mentor to them while they acclimate. acclimate. It could be they're feeling overwhelmed. Work with them to develop manageable goals to get them up to speed quicker. This is especially relevant now when new assistants are being onboarded while working remotely. 
What if it's a bigger team issue? We're all working longer hours and motivation even for the most positive people can wane. In this case, incentives are a fun and creative way to motivate your team. Getting the team involved in creating a contest with fun prizes will spice up the work week and give the employees something fun to refocus on. You don't have to spend a lot of time or money to make a big impact. The next leadership skill to develop is positivity. As an administrative professional, you are the beacon that guides your office into a positive mental space. Many people will confide in you, ask for your advice, and come to you for comfort, especially during this challenging time. You'll be the receiver of information about colleagues that may be having trouble getting along, or you'll perceive when there appears to be conflict between colleagues. Often, you can mediate the conflict by helping both parties understand where the other is coming from on an issue, and occasionally, you will have to alert HR or your executive if your attempts do not solve the situation. Empathy is an important skill to practice when people are having a difficult time. This is why having face-to-face one-on-ones or team meetings are so important right now, so you can see who may be struggling. You'll be able to tell from their mannerisms or how they participate in meetings, whether they're off their game. Being able to identify those circumstances early on and deal with them is an empathetic manner, in an empathetic manner will strengthen relationships in the office and provide comfort to those who are dealing with rough situations. Keep in mind, however, that people deal with diff uh, situations differently. What you consider to be inconsequential may be life-changing for someone else, so don't assume they are overreacting. Encouragement is one of the biggest com components for a positive environment. Most often, when work is suffering, it is due to a lack of appreciation for the work they are doing. As I mentioned earlier, not all executives show their appreciation. Ah, I know some of you, that's a big surprise. <laughs> this is where you can provide that for them. Take the time to send a quick email to a colleague recognizing the success of a recent project or pulling together that last minute virtual all hands meeting and then take it a step further and copy their executive. Don't underestimate the power of humor. Humor is a wonderful relief from the day-to-day -day stress that accompanies many offices. When used appropriately, humor can bring positivity into the environment and change attitudes from negative to positive. Being open-minded can be a difficult skill to embrace. Taking time to step back and observe the big picture in context and being open to hearing all sides of a story will help you to reach an approach to understanding how things truly work and how to improve them. Use the brainstorming method where everyone contributes ideas without judgment and everything is on the table to be considered until you can come to that final decision. Avoid the urge to say, we don't do that here, or we tried that before and it didn't work. Be open to doing things differently or trying what didn't work before again, because many factors might have changed since then, and it could potentially work now. Open-mindedness also includes acquiring feedback from your team to evaluate the effectiveness and progress of any process. Constant evaluation is key to building a stronger workflow in your office. In order to receive constructive feedback from your team, you must be approachable. If your team doesn't see you as approachable, it will hinder the amount of feedback and the authenticity of what type of feedback you receive, whether it is about a process, their performance, or even your own. 
always ask and listen first. If someone even senses that they are being attacked by the way a question is asked of them, or if a conversation begins with an accusation, your team member will likely shut down or only focus on defending themselves. Then make sure that their opinion is respected. And then finally, follow up with your team after any feedback is received. You want them to feel that their opinion is valued and they need to be aware that you are taking things seriously in evaluating any circumstance. This is especially important when dealing with conflict. Following up shows that you care about their well-being 